Our section was building materials. Building materials can be easily defined as a material used for constructing buildings. Building materials are very useful when trying to convey a message or feeling to a client. However, we must know how to classify them before using them. Each building material can be categorized in three main factors. These factors are stiffness, elasticity, and strength. The best materials are those that combine elasticity with stiffness. This combination provides very useful in many situations. Elasticity can be defined as the material's ability to absorb elements such as stretching and compression, yet go back to its original state. A material's elastic limit is the point in which the material can reach until it's permanently damaged. For example, materials that are brittle usually are, have a low elastic limit. As a result, these materials break under a certain relatively low load. As a result, these, these materials can support very little and should never be used as a structural element in the building. Stiffness is the force required to cause a material to reach its elastic limit. Knowing the material's stiffness, elasticity, and strength will provide a new insight on the material and save the project time and money. Now, I would like to ask my group members some questions about their section. Uh, I believe Brittany is the first one. Hello, Brittany. Are you there? Hello, Brittany. Did you have the environmental section? And what is that? So, you know, you talked about the stiffness, elasticity, and strength. You forgot to mention the density. So, the density of the material can tell an architect a lot of valuable information, such as its resistance to wear and abrasion, its durability, and the cost required to maintain it. You're right, density is very useful. Now, how does the environment play a factor to this? So the environment has a major impact on the material and can alter it if it's not protected. A change in temperature or moisture content in the environment can affect how a piece of material bonds with another material or combines physical form. As a result, this can cause major structural problems. Well, what element can cause such a huge impact? Right. So an example of these materials, reactions are making heat and reflection or absorption of light. So you have to carefully select materials that's necessary, especially when dealing with what material is for a finished material. Is there a certain uh, element or environment we have to look out for? Yes. In moist climate, an architect should be more careful when selecting the appropriate material. This type of environment, these type of environments, I'm sorry, a material should be able to resist water and water vapor. This is why materials need to be evaluated for different circumstances such as density, gas, and water. Other than water and water vapor, what other elements should we look out for? Other elements other than moisture and water is thermal. When constructing the exterior part of a building, we need to take thermal conductivity into consideration. Any interior finish from a material must on the building material must resist combustion, withstand exposure to fire, and not produce any type of smoke or toxic gases. This all has to be thought of while selecting the correct building material. That's true, Brittany, but I thought architecture was just deciding what material looks good. So, it may not be the only thing, but it does play a factor. Not only as architects, we want the structure to be efficient when it comes to materials. But we wanted to fit the scheme that we are trying to convey. Different colors, texture, and scale of the material also plays into effect when choosing the right material. We also need to think carefully about the manufacturer. Even though every manufacturer supplies the same material, each one of them has a different size. So, to some machinery size, this can affect depending on what we're using. What can we do to stop such a huge impact? Well, during the planning and design phase of the structure, we, the architect, must evaluate this. This will save project value, material, and time. There, there are also processes such as the life cycle assessment that helps, but the 
Josh doesn't cover that part. Yeah, thank you, Brittany. Hey, Josh, I know you're a little nervous. Can you elaborate? There are inputs and outputs that contribute to the life cycle sensor with the metallic and building materials. The inputs are the processes of raw material, energy, and water, which is key in the life cycle assessment. There are three factors that apply to that, which is the raw materials, energy, and water. Can you elaborate? Uh, there are five of the inputs, which leads to the outputs, which are, number one, the acquisition of raw materials. This kind of leads to extraction, mining, and harvesting of products, and how it can have an effect on the health of the environment. Number two, processing, manufacturing, and packaging. Many types of effects are processed, and materials are processed by the Oh, by the um, developer. Water is also plays a major role in the process of manufacturing and packaging to different zones for the materials to function. Construction use and maintenance. Materials must be able to perform as a function. It is a given in two, in two relation, interrelations with the materials that can affect how it is able to perform. Fourth one is transportation and distribution. Many companies order lots of materials for them to work, for them for its use, and the quantity and value of it depends great on it. Last but not least, the last factor from the input breakdown is disposal, recycling, and reuse. Materials that are re reused helps tremendously, which also prevents us from wasting material, and it must be reusable. Without the materials being reusable, there are there actually now renewable, the renewable materials are, 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 able to, are, are able to be reused in many different ways, which cause less consumption of materials, and so forth. Now, Rosie will conclude with the life cycle assessment. Thank you, Josh. Hey, Rosie, Josh talked about the process. Can you talk about your section? This section is about how to evaluate those materials. In other words, to criticize and classify accordingly to the multiple properties that it has. It also talks about the life cycle inventory process. Can you clarify about the life cycle inventory process? The life cycle inventory process consists of making decisions in the best way possible to be precise on the exact material that would be the most beneficial in each project. Another way to define the life cycle inventory would be that it measures the energy and raw materials input into the environment, how it affects the environment with each step that the project is associated with. Choosing between a high energy material and a low energy material is a question that can pop up and it is an essential part of evaluating because they can you mentioned something about high and low energy materials. Can you talk a bit more about it? The difference is that a higher energy material can last longer and does not need as much maintenance as a lower energy material. Also, high energy materials can be recycled and reduced. Do you have any recommendations or strategies? A good strategy to keep in mind is to reduce, reuse, and recycle when evaluating sustainability. Each of the words have a significant meaning. Reduce can help evaluate the size of the building by creating a layout. Reduce also stands for reducing construction waste. Specifically, products that use raw materials more efficiently and substitute plentiful resources for scarce resources are important to remember during the life cycle. Reuse buildings, building materials from the bottom buildings can be helpful and rehabilitate existing buildings for new use along with recycling new products 
is significantly important as well. Is there anything else you would like to add? Yes, like Joshua always mentioned before, building materials have a body energy, which refers to the energy used during the entire life cycle of a product, including the energy used for Minecraft, transporting and disposing of the product. Each material has a different amount of energy content that is measured in ATU. Do you have any examples of this? Well, sand and gravel have the lowest BTU with a total of 18. The second lowest is. Um, Joshua, can you please send me this? Oh, sure. Here you go. Thank you. Like I was saying, the second lowest is wood. Wood has a total of 185 BTU. The living material with the largest energy content is aluminum with a total of 103,500 BTU. We must always take under consideration these factors when selecting the appropriate building material to use. Oh, thank you, Rosie. Um, I believe you had some papers to give out. Yeah, is that it? One final thing. Joshua, can you hand this out? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Joshua is going to pass around the papers if you miss anything. Thank you, Rosie.